starting to put things together here. A few things we got to do. We got to get the gear installed. We got to get the uh, wing hold down dowels in the wing. Uh, we got to put the tail wheel assembly on and get this glued into the fuselage. Obviously, we've got to glue in our flight control, ailerons, elevator, rudder, uh, hinges. We got to get the uh, canopy on. Oh, yeah. Putting the servos in, link, uh, hooking up the control linkages. So I thought I'd start uh, with the gear because the gear kind of goes hand in hand with the dowels and I need to have the wing in place to make sure the horizontal stab is set correctly. Uh, what's interesting about the instructions is that apparently you don't actually glue in the gear spade. Kind of stuck it in here a little bit. <laughs> What's funny is, it talks about the instructions. It says that the dials go in. They don't go through these holes right here. They actually end up being a little bit sh uh, shorter. But it says the dials go in, but they don't prevent the spade from being inserted or taken out which kind of sounds to me like you never actually glue in the gear spade. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, maybe if you needed to repair it, I, I don't know. It is a very snug fit in its uh, slot. And it's probably not going to come out on its own. I'm still on the fence about whether I actually want to glue it in or not. But anyway, uh, very snug fit. I've already tried it a few times. Basically, you just kind of work your way into the slot, being very careful about where you're holding here because the structure, you know, is still pretty fragile. Um, I try to put my hands or my fingers right on top of one of the ribs and not press too hard. You just kind of work the gear spade in. As you can see, it's a pretty snug fit. And getting the last little bit without breaking anything is pretty tough. Now at this point, you could, you could take it out, I've done it. You basically grab here like this and put your thumbs here and here and you just kind of gradually work it out. It takes a little bit, but you can work it out. That right there, I mean, that's not gonna come out, I don't think, on its own. And so it's probably not necessary to actually glue it in. Anyway, and then you have to come back along through here and re, uh, re shrink the covering. So let's say we leave this in, now we get to put the uh, hold down dowels in, and they're not too bad, they still slip in pretty easily. And they will bottom out on the gear spade right about there. So they have, they're just basically uh, bumping up against the face of the gear spade. Now we can glue these in. I could cut them off a little bit shorter but there doesn't seem to be any problem in, in putting the wing to the fuselage. So I think I'm just leaving the way they are. And I'll just use a little bit of CA for this. Just to glue it in. The only thing you're really gluing it to is the leading edge right here since, remember, or it does say in the instructions that the dowels can not prevent the spade from coming out, so also that means you can't glue it to the spade.
couple of drops of CA and I think we can call that done. All right, let's open up this area right here for the uh, servo wires. This one the same way that I did that one. Normally with these CA hinges I'll mark a center line and I'll put a pin through them and I'll put it in all at one time and then hit it with CA. But this time I'm not going to do that for one reason the, ma the material is just there's no meat there for these really these CA hinges to grab hold of so I don't know if that even does me any good. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm just going to hold the aileron up, make sure that the CA hinges align up with the slots that have already been pre-cut, and they do. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and just hit a drop or two of CA on this side of the hinge. One thing this will do, unfortunately, sometimes it makes a hard uh, ball or hard, feels like concrete on the end where the CA seeps uh, in through capillary action. So I just hit it with that, the hard piece with some uh, 60 grit. slide it just slightly towards the end. That's good. I don't want to move this side too much yet because I don't think the CA is fully cured. So next would be to glue in the plywood control horns. I am going to go ahead and use the kit supplied 47 thousandths of an inch uh, music wire. Use the Z bin. And then I'm going to use a soldered ball link on the other end for the uh, servo. Alright, um, first thing to do is to find where the slot was. Uh, there's two pieces of, uh, I think it was one 30 second plywood. So you just slot the middle, and I've already found the slots and, and pre-slotted them. You just gotta cut away the covering. That's all you need to do there. Now these are another fairly tight fit on this kit. So our control horns are normally a more robust material and something more than just thin CA. But I'm going to go with the design of this kit. That's how it was designed. So I'm going to go with it. Normally I'd be using epoxy to glue these kind of things in. I 
I already have the music wire cut. I'm going to put the Z bend control horn and then the mic. Uh, let's see, what's the ball link with the solderable uh, uh, connector? Um, I already have that cut to link. Uh, soldering. <clears throat> I'll admit right up front that I'm not a great solderer. Um, sometimes I can get it first try. Other times it takes me a long time to get something soldered. Usually in the end, I can get the job done. But the key to good soldering, the absolute key is cleanliness. So I do what I can to make sure the parts are clean. With a little brass coupler, uh, I don't really have anything to get inside there to clean it, so what I do is I just soak it in alcohol. This is 95% alcohol, and just let it soak for a little while. While it's soaking, I will clean the um, music wire. I just use a 400 grip. Clean that with some denatured alcohol. Then I'll just stick the wire into the flux, get a little bit on there. Take the brass coupler. Keep just a little bit of heat to the flux to let it melt and run in. Let me go file this down, give a tug on this and see if it's going to hold. I filed off all the excess solder and then I washed it with window cleaner with ammonia and then I gave it a really hard tug with a pair of uh, pliers and it wouldn't budge so I'm going to call this one a win. Alright, everything seems to be pretty good. I adjusted the travel to 150%. That's what it gives me. It's not quite the full 45 degree throw. So I believe I'm going to have to move the music wire down to the lower hole and the ply horn to give me the, all the... Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to change out servos too. This one's got some lag in it. I did uh, go yesterday and get some uh, new servos. Um, these are some Emacs servos. Um, my local hobby guy likes to sell these things. These are the ES08. MV2. They are metal geared digital servos. They were almost an exact fit of the ones that I put in. The body was just a little bit too long, about maybe one millimeter. Not much, just a little file down the ends. The uh, screw holes were almost in the same identical position, close enough. Um, I was gonna need a, or I am gonna need a about a four inch extension. And since I am using uh, an extension, first thing I like to do to that is to heat shrink the connection. Um, even the ones that have the little hooks on them, uh, I heat shrink those as well. The, uh, this wing I've pretty much, or this sailor on, 
servo I've pretty much already done. One thing about these servos that first time I've seen this is that the pigtails actually come out the bottom instead of normally coming out the front, which makes it a little tougher to kind of work its way in. These come out the bottom. That makes it uh, a lot easier to get the servo in narrow pockets. Originally, I was going to go with these little ball links, but when I got the new servos, I also got some longer arms. Well, these arms are too thick for the, really to get the, uh, the nut on here um, for these small ball links. I was having a little bit of difficulty with that. So I'm going to keep the brass coupler and instead of using the ball link, I'm going to use some uh, plastic clevises that came from some other small model. I think it was an EDF or something. I don't know. It ends up, the, it's a perfect fit. The, um, the ball link, or the, I'm sorry, the brass coupler uh, screws right into the uh, clevis perfectly. So I'm going to go that route. Um, and so with that, I can now get the clevis onto the thicker uh, servo arm, which gives me the throw that I need. Now, ideally, this linkage here should be 90 degrees to the control horn, but that's not, that's not the way the kit was designed. So, again, I'm going to do this uh, as designed. So, this is what we end up with. With this, Last hole here in the servo arm, we do get a full 45 degrees of deflection both ways. This linkage, I had already done it before, so I had to go in and desolder the brass coupler, adjust the uh, push rod, had to make it shorter, and then resolder this one. Let's see if I can do this one right the first time. Then I'll cut the wire where it's marked. The brass coupler I have soaking my little jar of alcohol again. So that feels neutral. This one's going to work out pretty good the first time. Let's see, make sure the servo arm is fully seated.
right. I don't know. To me, that looks pretty good. On to the uh, tail feathers. Uh, we need to get the horizontal stab mounted, the elevators mounted, the fan is just in position right now. It hasn't actually been glued in. And then the last thing would be the rudder. I've already done a little bit of the pre measuring. I didn't want to take up a whole lot of time on camera. I've already kind of measured out where the horizontal stab is going to be placed in the fuselage and I've marked it out uh, just to help uh, uh, get it quickly into position. I put a pin up here at the center of the fuselage and I'll measure from the pin back to the tip of the horizontal stab. The other thing that I'm looking at while I'm doing that and, and moving this is I'm checking the gap on the elevators. He said, I want this gap to be about as even as I can make it. Um, making sure the tips are flush and there won't be so much of that you can adjust because now that that music wire is installed, this whole thing's going to have to slide as a unit. At the same time, I should say, I'm looking at you gotta remember, if you make an adjustment one way, you gotta check the other measurements as well. I'm checking from the tip of the horizontal stab, in this case, to the tip of the aileron. I have the ailerons so that they're flush with the wing. The measurements should be as close as you can get them. So, I believe I have this measurement equal and this measurement equal. I guess I should have mentioned, we're gonna to have to end up taking this horizontal stab off anyway because we we need to cut away the covering so we can get a good bond between balsa and balsa. To make sure you don't cut away too much covering in a certain area, I wait, get it marked, know about where I want the, everything to be, and then, yes, remove this, it's been marked, remove this, cut away the covering, and I think I will also glue in my little shim at the same time. Now these are my marks. I'm gonna cut just to the inside of these marks, leave a little bit of uh, covering there. Maybe like a, like this, maybe a 16, 3 30 seconds of an inch. Cut away the trim, top and the bottom. At this point, Thinking of gluing in my little paper shim that I'm going to need. I think I'm just going to tackle it for now. Let's see if I can get this in without pushing it out. Doing a check real quick just to make sure that that's gonna work. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm back. Uh, boy, that took a whole lot longer the second time than I did the first time. Um, anyway, I got all the numbers even. I'm happy with it. I've got the, uh, um, <laughs> I'm not sure what you would call it, down versus the wing. That's all looking good. Um, so now it's ready for some glue. And I'm just going to use a uh, thin CA for this. And then after it dries, I'll come back in with a thicker uh, uh, CA fillet. Um, uh, maybe I should say fillet. I never know if it was fillet or fillet. Like, Filet of steak or a fillet of steak. I don't know. Anyway, let's add some glue. Alright, now I'm going to add a, a thick uh, 
gap filling CA fillet. All right, time to move on uh, to gluing in the elevators. This is just basic CA hinging. Nothing new here. The one thing that I did, uh, maybe I got my tolerances a little too close. I'm not sure, maybe it's because of the covering, but I had a little bit of rubbing here between the elevator and the horizontal stab on both sides. So what I'm having to do is Put a little playing card shim in and kind of push the elevator in. And that gives me a pretty good gap. I don't hear any rubbing. Now what that, unfortunately what that's gonna do for me is it gives me a wider gap here than I really. I think it's ready to go ahead and Give the hinges a shot of CA. I haven't pre-glued any of them. I'm just going to hit the whole hinge at the same time. I believe the instructions said not to glue in the music wire into the aluminum uh, bushing. So yeah. We're just going to be attaching the elevator with the four CA hinges. Exercise the joint a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a slight rub. Remember I told you, I think I said if I had to cut away or sand away a little bit of the trailing edge of the elevator because it was rubbing against the fuselage down in this area. Well, that's what's happening over here. You're getting a very slight rub, um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using that much elevator. Anyway, it's not really hindering the movement of the elevator. The last thing here with the control services is to get the Vertical fan installed and the rudder. I've already cut away the covering for the fin to fit in the slot. Fin is in. Let's see if we can't go ahead and mic out the rudder while we're at it. Sometimes I have to do this with these hinges. I take them in and out so much that they start coming apart. So I just had a little touch of CA and a plastic baggie and just kind of squeeze it together. Now, before we really go in, let's make, make sure that this bottom skid where the tail will go, let's make sure it's gonna fit without issues. Got it. 
think I'm going to go ahead and glue in this bond skin. Everything. It's even. Let's do it. few more things done uh, since the last time. I have the <coughs> rudder and elevator servos installed with the uh, linkage. Same method of uh, soldering in the push rods to the brass couplers as I did with the ailerons. One thing I don't really like is the angle here between the servo arm and the push rod. However, I am getting about 60 degrees of deflection. I had to put the push rod in the second to last hole. I'll fly it and see how this works. I may change it. But you can see I'm getting uh, 6 degrees on the bottom and almost 6 degrees. I'm not sure if I can show you this. Uh, almost six degrees with the down elevator. A little bit short, maybe a couple degrees. I've got the uh, servo set on 100% travel now, so yeah, I could adjust that a little bit if necessary. I'll fly it first, see how things work out. The elevator, I'm sorry, the rudder, it works good. I haven't actually checked the amount of angle, but I'm kind of limited the way it's set up now, the push rod, I could get a little more of left rudder here. So you can see that left rudder. But the thing is, to the right, watch the push rod. It's starting to bend just a little bit. So I don't think I can do any more right rudder. If I can't do any more right rudder, I might as well just leave the left rudder alone. I'll fly it, see how it works. Try to make adjustments as necessary. Uh, I don't think I can add any more to the rudder though because of the way that push rod is bending. So what else was done? Uh, well, that pretty much completes the bottom. I still have to add the tail wheel and that's gonna be part of this next series. I've got the um, cockpit area covered in plastic film. I need to Hinge the battery hatch. Instructions want you to use either plastic tape or covering, something I've never done before, but I'll give it a shot. I already have my uh, trim covering cut to glue that on. And then of course the canopy. And with that, I think the model will be complete.